Um, this are the Vita Hedge. If you're familiar with them, you'll know that they tend to fall apart in snowstorms, and as they get old and aging, they get fatter and whiter like us. So typically pruning just even isn't enough to keep them from getting kind of loose and floppy. And here we have some storm damage that had fallen down with snow, and we're ended up with a gap here. So we're going to take cattle panel. Now, excuse me, but I'm probably going to call them hog panel at some point in this uh, video because I'm so used to calling them hog panel. I grew up on a hog farm. This is cattle panel. All the squares are fairly well equal. And the difference is hog panel. We do have one piece here that actually is hog panel. Uh, normally that would be oriented upside down. And that, you know, the pig snout can't get through that very good. So we're going to use this to wrap the end of this hedge. As you see here, we're staging the uh, cattle panel. Um, and we're going to start cinching them together with wire. And it's basically going to be a girdle that holds all the boughs and all the hedge together. And we're going to be able to shrink probably two to three feet out of the width of this hedge. And then after that, it grows through it, and you'll never see this again. And I've done it for about 10 years, and it's a very good way to uh, fix a, a floppy bad hedge and get many more years out of it. So storm damage, storm damage doesn't take them out. So you can see down here, we've propped the first panel in with our boards and we'll go around the other side of the hedge and we're gonna poke wire through and then start cinching together about at every other intersection here on the, on the hog, there I get hog panel, on the cattle panel. So this is the wire that I like to use. Picked it up at Lowe's. It's a poly-coated galvy wire and it's still flexible enough to bend with your own hands and not bruise your fingers up after a day of doing it and so we hook it on the end of this little pvc and we poke it through the hedge and hopefully don't poke somebody's eye out the other side then we tie off so we just repeat and rinse probably about a dozen times per panel that's the end wow that is so cool One thing we're also going to do after we get the, uh, the paneling on is go through here with a blower and try to blow all of this dead out as much as we can. So this dead material creates shade and if you get that out of there, the plant's more likely to sprout some new, new growth points after we get the uh, edge wrap. Now, one thing that I always tell customers when they're doing Arbovita, if you have an Arbovita hedge that's like 20 feet tall and it's perfect shape and you've never trimmed it, I'll try to talk people out of ever trimming it. If the moment you trim it, you do something you can't take back. And it basically unties all the natural weave that the plant wants to grow naturally, like a spear. And so, um, you know, if you want it eight feet, then you just have to do it. But then you're committing to pruning every year. Now, that begets a new problem. After this has been trimmed so many years consecutively, over and over, every point that gets trimmed duplicates in two or more, and you get this beautiful thick wall, which is also too heavy. And so if you think of your hedge as a spear with the side weight on the walls, they get so heavy, it literally starts pulling the top of the hedge apart and you end up with a trench. You can literally see daylight through the middle of this hedge. So when I'm trying to top it, it's not together and solid. So it's just floppy and kind of a weird situation. This paneling uh, concept fixes all that. And it literally cinches and draws the hedge together tight. It's also a great security thing. If somebody wanted to run through the hedge, they literally bounce off this thing. It'd be kind of a great thing to see. Um, and then we'll talk about some pruning later. Um, and we're gonna top this hedge as soon as we're done wrapping it together, which is why I skipped pruning it last week, because otherwise if you do this first, or if you prune the whole thing and then wrap the hedge, it w makes the top weird and you get all these little sawtooth, funny little ledges. So literally the, the top of the hedge will be in a whole new area once it's wrapped. Hence the reason to delay pruning it till the last uh, step. So. All right, so this is actual hog panel. And instead of the cattle panel, this is a small square. But I'm gonna bend this for the end cap. There we go, now we got a pretty well perfectly sculpted panel for the end cap. Make it a lot easier. So as you can see, 
This is a nice taper. It's going to get more sun exposed. This is the north side of the hedge. North side of the hedge is going to be slower to repair due to lack of sun. But getting this rolled in like this can get more sunlight down here. Obviously, you can see a pretty good example of before and after. We do have the bottom panel on. We're going to add the top panel and continue to cinch it into the top and uh, close this hedge up. There's a big gap on the top. And, uh, and again, as mentioned before, we're going to get a blower out, try to blow out all this dead debris that's in there. It's very typical. It's not an unhealthy hedge. Just every hedge has old foliage that uh, has fall off on the inside. But with what we're doing, getting this blown out of there is going to get more daylight deeper into the hedge. And, uh, it'll help. It'll help little points in here pop new little buds and green up for us and eventually hide this mesh. It won't even be seen. In fact, think of this mesh. You know, you've probably heard me, you got a hernia or something, they put a mesh in your stomach lining, or not your stomach lining, but your abdomen. And it just eventually it gets covered up, and you know, we'll never see this again. And we'll just have one super stout head. <laughs> So one thing that a lot of landscapers do uh, wrong is neglecting the sharpening of the shears and basically it makes you work three times harder than you really need to. So one way to identify if your uh, shears are starting to get dull, we'll take this one for example, I haven't even looked at this, but we'll see what we get. Uh, these are pretty darn sharp, but it'll start rolling on the inside. And you want your contact points from side to side to be super tight uh, proximity. So once a head starts getting, trimmer starts getting dull, the inside curves get rolled off. Then you end up with this gap and you end up shredding the uh, plant instead of clipping it. And then the other thing that you know is your arms start getting tired. Basically, when you draw one of these across an arborvitae hedge, it should feel like you're cutting nothing, like zero resistance, almost zero resistance. Now. Another thing is if you sharpen your own, and this I've seen this done wrong, you need to make sure, I wish this was wide open, you can kind of see how it rolls on the bottom. That's where the majority of your cutting is actually happening. And if someone was to come in with a die grinder, just uh, make a straight cut and not roll the inside, then you're not even clipping down there. And it it's really bad to try to trim with a set of shears that isn't uh, sharpened right. This is the one that I like to use. It's not a combi, in other words, it's a straight shaft, and it's got the nice articulating boom on the end. And so you'll notice if you're watching me trim that I'm constantly playing with this angle while I'm trying to get a, a cut on the hedge. And uh, same thing here. This one's still pretty sharp. I really don't see much evidence of any rolling on the inside yet. Um, and once my shears get a little bit dull, uh, Arpavita is the most snickety with like needing the sharpest shears available uh, you could take some relatively dull shears and trim ivy uh, maybe some other plants they'll shear easier but the litmus the litmus test is when you get onto an arborvita and you feel resistance you know that your shears just aren't sharp enough for the job I'll just quit go get them sharpened before I even start a job couple more things to say about pruning and that is um, one problem when you are running with dull shears you, you get that drag it's gonna work your arms out a lot harder but then you tend to gouge the hedge out because it's creating resistance and you can't evenly trim the head so you'll end up with all these basically scalp marks so another good reason to have sharp shears the other reason too or not a reason but Bad example here because I don't want to hit hog panel, but nor normal situations, if, if you're going exactly perpendicular to your cut, like straight as an arrow, by tilting at about 20 degrees, you're exposing more uh, blade exposure to what you're trimming, and it'll clean up a lot cleaner now, you know, by tilting it like that. Now, if they're dull, they're going to take off and gouge into the head, so that's bad. So sharp shears, you have a lot more uh, leeway on that and uh, 
Anyway, now here's our procedure. All the caging's on, it's tied in. I've sheared it off here, and you think, well, why did you want to shear it off and expose more wire right now? Well, I didn't really want to, but there's no choice. By getting it clipped and managed right at this height, everything's going to sprout out. Next year, we can come back and give it a couple inches, and then so on and so forth. This will all fill in. We've got all the dead out of there. Looks pretty ugly. This is because we had a lot of storm damage, and a lot of boughs literally fell out, and we just had to cut them off because they weren't even good enough to tie up. So now we'll do the top. Thank you.